What is up, YouTube? This is yours truly. I'm from Ray coming at you guys with another video. Before we go in, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. It is that time of year, gun collection. Well, we, we always do ours in a top 10 format. Don't feel like trying to drag out everything that I own. Uh, but I am going to do the top 10 of my favorite firearms that are in my collection. And um, just kind of give you a brief description of each of them and keep it moving. So with all further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Number one, where well, it's no, no particular order either. A Glock has made it on the list. I don't know how it happened, but a Glock has made it. So this is going to be Glock 20. This is going to be chambered in 10 millimeter. It's going to have a uh, capacity of 15 rounds total. And this is going to be a lot of power. This is going to be something I can use for a bear gun when I'm out in the woods. But I could also double down on it and use it for home defense. See those berries, those critical duty. Yep, those are my home defense rounds. And I've shot this uh, not a whole lot. Um, so this is not something I'm using for home defense at the time. But I already have it loaded with home defense. Um, ammo as you can see just in case but I've shot it a few times um, with some basically some hard casts so I shot it with some of the hottest stuff ever no issues I shot some um, normal uh, brass this ball ammo through it I've actually shot some of the critical duty through it as well so total I have about 250 rounds through it but I'd like to get about 500 to a thousand through it before I actually depend on my life with it but again, Glock 20, nothing major, simple, basic. And if you're wondering why I decided to get the Gen 4 version is that I got this one for pretty much dirt cheap. And having MOS is not a deal breaker for me. I'm not a person that has to have an optic on each and every gun, last gun I own. All right, next up it is going to be a Mossberg Shockwave 20 gauge. This is gonna be chambered in 20 gauge. Um, this is going to be what five plus one capacity, but I also have the actual uh, side saddle right here. Now, I did some modifications on it, put the SB tactical brace on there, makes it much better, a much more functional weapon than having a bird's eye grip on there. You can actually aim much better. I mean, you can get good with the bird's eye grip, but you're going to be much better with four points of contact. Uh, do a little Olight on there. I know a lot of people don't like Olight. Oh, it's made in China, but uh, check your cell phone and see where your parts are made, and I can guarantee you that most of them are made in China. You better believe that. But this is going to be my little nightstand boomstick. I keep this in between my bed, and I sleep very, very well with this. It's very light. It's very maneuverable, and 20 gauge. <laughs> don't get it twisted. You get hit with this set of ass, the lights will be cut off. This is a nice little boomstick here. And it's easy to maneuver, very light, and very versatile, nice little home defense weapon. And this is something I'll put next to the bed. All right, what we're gonna do next? Next up, I think I'll do PSA, PSA Rock. All right, so this is gonna be chambered in 5.7, and this is gonna have a capacity of, what, 23 plus one, so that's a total of 24. And I decided to get the, uh, I guess, the loaded version. So it has the hollows in there. It also has your suppressor high sights, has the uh, threaded barrel, obviously has your accessory rails, aggressive Tetron on front and back. And one thing I like about 5.7, man, when you shoot this, it's like soft as a, soft as a fella, <laughs> a feather, I should say. Very, very soft. Um, no recoil whatsoever. Um, I like the grip on it and also with 5.7 because the ammo is so much lighter the guns are much lighter when they're loaded So take a uh, 5.7 next to a loaded 9mm and pick them both up at the same time and you'll notice a difference uh, Instantly, but for what you get out of the box with the PSA rock uh, You can't beat it. Uh, there's a lot of other 5.7s on the market not, I'm not gonna say this is the best one because that's very subjective but as far as uh, value, I would say this is the best value that you can get in a 5.7. And yes, it's very reliable. It's eaten everything that I've shot through it. Um, I've shot, I think I have at least 500 rounds through it. And the reason I only have 500 rounds through it because uh, 5.7 uh, ammo is not the cheapest. Uh, but if you want something that's a fun plinker and you don't mind spending the extra money, get into the 5.7 and none other than the PSA Rock 5.7. Beautiful firearm. All right, next up, 
We are gonna go into my AR-15 pistol. This is gonna be by Duck Armory. This is gonna be chambered in 300, and 300 blackout. All right. And again, Duck Armory is not to be confused with Duck Creek Armory. This is Duck Armory out of Texas. They have their own little logo there, but they make their own upper, then lowers. And this is high quality stuff. It's not some really, really, it's not the El Cheapo, believe it or not. Uh, this stuff eats everything. I've run subs through it. I've run supers, pretty much anything that I put through it is run. Want to add a suppressor to it. Uh, I'm probably going to add uh, some kind of assist here. Uh, definitely got to change out that charging handle. May change out the grip, but definitely at some point I want to really, really take advantage of what 300 Blackout has to offer. So I got to get a can on that, you know, sooner and not later. But yeah, this is a good little backpack gun, uh, short, eight inch barrel. Uh, eats everything and it packs a nice little punch something that you could uh, you know use as a truck gun uh, this will definitely keep anybody and anything off your back but now uh, this is a good little um, self-defense gun and it also can be a good backpack gun but you need to add a light to it assist to it change up the charging handle maybe the grip and probably add a can to it and that would probably finish the bill for me honestly all right next up we're gonna go next all right so we are gonna go one of my favorite handguns this is going to be beretta m92 a1 so it's going to be the 92 a1 a beretta m9 92 a1 um there's not much to say about a beretta uh, m9 it's a classic uh, has been used in many wars uh, it just now uh, got usurped by SIG, which I don't think SIG makes a better product, but you know, I'm not going to even get into that. <laughs> That's a, a whole nother video, but this is going to be 15 rounds of 9mm. Uh, this is going to be a heavy metal frame, so you're going to get very, 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 very soft recoil. Uh, it has the open slide here, so you're not going to have to worry about malfunctions. As a matter of fact, I've never had a malfunction out of this. And it's going to be uh, hammer fire. So if you want to pull it back and get that soft pull on the first uh, pull, you can easily do that. Also has ambidextrous uh, safety, so both front and back. And by the way, YouTube, all firearms are safe. So I don't hear where is it safe? Yes, it is. All right. So this is going to be one of my nicer pistols. Um, I love it. I love Berettas. Um, they're just classy. Uh, this is definitely like the Cadillac of uh, pistols. Uh, it doesn't have optics cut. Like I said, I'm not um, an end-all be-all optics person. If you want to put an optics on your gun, that's fine, but it's not the end-all be-all. Um, but yeah, man, get you one in your life. If you don't have an M9, get you one. They're beautiful firearms. Uh, they perform well, soft recoil, and they retain their value as well. Okay. All right, next up, we are going to go AK-47, which is going to be PSAK-47. This is going to be chambered in 762 by 39 It is going to have Magpul furniture through and through. Uh, the stock folds, Magpul grip here. Uh, you got your polymer mags. Uh, some magazines it does not like to take. It does not like case the eye. But other than that, man, this thing eats everything. It's my, uh, my baby here. Love this AK. Uh, you know, this will be something else that'll keep anyone off of you. Anything uh, that comes through your door or anything that comes through the wood, this will definitely keep them off of you. Uh, this is a full 16 inch rifle though. It's a full inch rifle, so it's not a truck gun. Uh, but this is something fun uh, that I shoot at the range, not something I personally use for home defense because of my uh, living situation. 762 by 39 will cut through my walls like butter. I know all ammo will cut through walls like butter, but this will probably cut through bricks like butter as well and end up in my neighbor's home. So uh, this is not something I've used for home defense. Uh, this is mostly just a range toy, but if you don't have an AK, man, get one in your life. And uh, PSA, in my opinion, makes the best uh, American-made uh, AK. So this is the GF3 version too. So this is the PSAK GF3 AK. All right, and again, it has a folding stock, mag full furniture, both grip and, uh, you know, forward grip there. Um, the trigger, it's all right. I could probably drop a better trigger in there at some point. But again, this is more of a range toy than anything, in my opinion, for where I live at. All right, so next up is going to be, where we're going to go next. All right, y'all, we're going to go 
semi-automatic shotgun. So we're gonna go Beretta A300 Ultima Patrol. This is gonna be a semi-automatic shotgun, not a pump, semi-automatic shotgun made by Beretta. Um, it is gonna have a capacity of seven plus one, which is gonna be way more than enough to keep anyone off of you. If you can't uh, get through a gunfight with seven rounds of shotgun, Ammo, I don't know what to tell you, especially a home defense situation. Not not war, but home defense. Someone kicking your door at two in the morning, you know, three or four thugs, and you start letting this off and you start hitting what you hit what you're shooting at, it's gonna make them think about doing other things besides robbing your home. I can promise you that. Buckshot makes people react different differently. It does. Uh, and this is gonna be one of Beretta's uh I guess newest offerings. This is uh, based on the A300 uh, platform that was used in mostly hunting shotguns, but they converted it uh, to a tactical shotgun. And the, dif dif the difference between the 1301, because I know a lot of people will probably ask, what's the difference between this and the 1301? It's going to be the boat carry group. Uh, the um, 1301 has a lighter recoil because it has a system called the Blink system. So it gives in a you know, not a much lighter recoil, but a little lighter recoil, and that's really the biggest difference. And it'll shoot a little bit faster, but most of the parts are pretty much the same. Uh, the thing I like most about it is that it has a super large loading gate for people with big hands. Uh, you have big controls, your charging handle's big. Uh, you have your accessory rail here if you want to drop an optic on it. It also has uh, ghost ring sights. You got your ghost ring here. I want to turn it all the way around. And then you have your fiber optic sight up front. Um, I haven't done anything to it. Need to probably put a sling on it and a light and I'll probably be done with it. Maybe add an optic, I don't know. You know, I'm still not on board with optics yet, but we'll get there. Also throw a strip on here. Always want to have some extra ammo on your side there. But this has eaten everything that I put through it. I've actually shot, bird shot through it. No problems whatsoever. It is eat, 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 eats. And if you want a semi-automatic shotgun, this is a good one to get. It's a run you right around a thousand dollars depending on where you go and uh it's worth every penny of it but if you want to get a semi-automatic shotgun look no further than beretta or benelli <laughs> in my opinion as far as um those are concerned all right next up all right man we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here all right so next up is going to be what we're gonna do all right so we're gonna go Oh, I'll stop my camera down. We're gonna go ZPAP 92. Yes, sir. ZPAP. The style of ZPAP. So basically, this is nothing but a short AK. Um, I did put uh, the folding brace on here, thanks to my buddy uh, Christian Gress. And this is gonna be chambered in 762 by 39. Uh, this thing right here is made like a tank, man. Um, the receiver is very solid. If you ever pick one of these up, you'll know the difference uh, as a chrome out um, receiver there. But this thing right here uh, eats and eats and eats everything. Fun, fun to shoot at the actual range. Uh, you get a lot of fireballs. Um, not something I would use for home defense, again, because of my living situation. Not that 762 won't put someone down. It will, um, but it could also put my neighbor down because of where I live at. I don't live in the country, so... I have to keep that in mind, but yes, this is a Sestava ZPAP. Um, it is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, basically an AK variant, um, a shorter variant, uh, but this thing spits out fire, chrome that receiver, uh, it takes pretty much any mag. I've shot brass, I've shot steel, nothing stopped this thing from going. This is uh, definitely one of the favorite weapons in the collection. So if you have not gotten yourself an AK pistol, if you're thinking about getting one, look at the Sestava ZPAP. It is actually um, a workhorse, in my opinion. Made in Serbia, gets the job done. Very heavy, very sturdy. So the, re the recoil um, actually is mitigated because it's so heavy. But this is a solid, solid tool. Definitely, definitely would recommend anyone to get themselves um, a Sestava ZPAP. All right. <laughs> Almost done. All right, next up. You know, I, you know I had to have another shotgun on here. So we're gonna do the Mossberg 598-1. This is gonna be chambered in 12 gauge two. This is gonna be the one that has the highest capacity. This is gonna be eight plus one. 
And this is going to be the heavy, heavy barrel uh, shotgun. Uh, the difference between this versus the you know normal 590 or Fevix, can't get my words together, or 500 is that it's going to have a heavy, heavy barrel. Uh, it's also going to have a uh, steel uh, safety. It's going to have steel trigger and trigger guard. So that's going to be the difference. It's going to have a super heavy, heavy uh, barrel wall. And this was made for the Navy so it can take uh, plenty of, of abuse. But I decided to put my poker on there. And that's going to be uh, the Ontario Arms M9. But this is one of my favorite shotguns. Uh, this thing is very sturdy, uh, very, very durable, and very rustic. If, this, if there was ever a shit hit the fan situation and I could only take one shotgun, it would definitely, definitely be the uh, 598.1 by a pretty much huge margin. It also has the uh, speed stock here, which you can put two shells on each side. Um, it's a uh, nice shotgun, man. Uh, to me, this is the king of all pumps. Like, people consider the Benelli uh, M4 the king of uh, semi-automatic shotguns. Well, this is the king of pump shotguns by far, in my opinion. Better than um, up to date in you know the 870s. I know a lot of people like 870s, but nothing is like this thing right here. This thing is a tank, and this is something um, that if I had to leave the house and shit hit the fan, I would definitely, definitely feel good about this. I can depend on my life with this. This is eating everything I've ever put to it. Never had any malfunctions. Never had a hiccup. And this thing just goes and goes and goes and goes. And a recoil is going to be a lot less than other shotguns because this thing is so darn heavy. Again, you can use this thing to work out with because it's just that heavy. But yeah, man, get you a Mossberg 590A1 and your life. Definitely. All right. So, we're down to the last one, aren't we? And you already know what that's going to be. That's going to be my baby. This is going to be the Smith & Wesson uh, Model 686 chambered in 357 and this is going to be the plus version so it's going to actually be seven plus one so you're actually going to have seven rounds of 357 and i just love it fire up fiber optic sight up front got your high uh, sights up front and again this gun is clear just fii um but this is going to be at the uh, six inch barrel so it's going to be a long barrel beautiful 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 all chromed out very very heavy uh, when you shoot 357 through it, it is just, you know, light as a feather. Uh, some 357 loads can be stout, but the heaviness of this gun definitely mitigates some of that recoil. If you ever shot 357 through this, and then you go shoot a snubby, you'll know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, by far my favorite gun. I love classic guns. I love revolvers. Uh, I do have, a, you know, another revolver, but this is definitely the one. Uh, may pair it up with a uh, 44 Magnum or maybe that 350 Le Legend version just to be different. But yeah, that pretty much concludes uh, my 2024 gun collection because I know I can talk my head off. But um, I want to thank you guys for coming along. And uh, the reason we own guns is that we can protect our families. We can hunt. And last reason is because we can. We don't need um, the government to tell us what we can and cannot do. It's our right. And don't ever let anyone infringe on that. But that is pretty much all I have, guys. Thank you guys for coming along with the uh, 2024 gun collection. We'll catch you in the next video. 2A up.